can I tell you the story behind this book? Never in a million years would I have thought that I would one day be an author. Because I'm told now I'm an author because I wrote a book. But the way it happened was I never actually ever planned to write a book. Someone asked me a question on a Facebook forum. And the best way to, 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 to help him with his question was to draw him a picture. So I drew a picture and I, and I posted it and I said, that's your problem and that's how you're going to fix it. And he looked at it and he went back and he tied the flight and he said, that helped me tremendously. And then another guy said, well, can't you draw me a picture too? I'm battling with this. And then I drew another picture. And after a couple of pictures, someone said to me, you know, if you wrote a book with those little pictures, I would buy it. <clears throat> and I thought, maybe I should write a book. So there and then I decided I am writing a book. And I didn't just decide I'm going to write it, I put it on Facebook. Because once you put something out into the world, if you don't do it, you look like a pawpaw. So it kind of forces you to do it. And then, an hour later, I had 20 people who said, put me on the list. I said, you do realize writing a book is a process which could take a couple of years. They said, no problem, put us on the list. So I started writing a book. But I couldn't do it on my own. So I went to my friend, who's a filmmaker, and I said to him, Tim, can you please help me write this book? And he said, Gordy, we know nothing about books. He said, Tim, it's a book. How hard can it be? And he said, but we know nothing. I said, we don't need to know anything. We'll find out what we need to know. He said, are we going to go through a publisher? I said, no, we're going to do it ourselves, man. We're clever enough. Anyway, so we started working on this book. Then I put some stuff out there on Facebook. And I said, guys, I need some photos. I need... And so many people came up to me, like Leonard Fleming said, Gordon, whatever you need, you got it. I said, I need pictures of insects. Because one of the big problems is everyone ties these flies, but a lot of people don't know what they imitate. So I'd like to be able to show them a picture of this thing. And Leonard said, actually, one of my friends is a biologist and has written a whole book about the aquatic invertebrates of South Africa. And I think he'll let you use these pictures too. So he put me in touch with this guy named Christian Fry. And, and Christian said, yeah, no problem. You can have my library, whatever you want. For the book, no problem. And he started that. So eventually we got this thing going and it, it started building momentum. COVID actually, believe it or not, helped me because I had an excuse to sit down and work on a book every day. I'm an actor by profession. I didn't have any income. I was freaking out. I was really, I was freaking out. You know, it's like normal people freak out, we freak out. Yeah. And, <laughs> no, but get this. Some, so, so what happens is I lie in my bed awake at night and I think, what am I going to do? I'm going to be destitute. The bank's going to take away the house. They'll probably take the kids away too. And it becomes one of those things. And a voice said to me, calm down, dude. Just relax. You need to work on your book. Draw. That's all you have to do. I'm like, what about the bucks? The voice said, relax. I'll do the bucks. <laughs> the next day, my agent phones me. Hi, Gordon Samantha. Yeah. I'm like, hi, Sam. How you doing? She said, you know that commercial you shot six years ago? Well, they want to reuse it. I'm going to pay 50 grand into your bag right now. Come on. That's so cool. True story. That's so cool, man. So I'm like, okay, so you did say you were going to give me a salary. That's cool. I'm going to need more than that, though. Because <laughs> it could take forever. No, don't stress. We'll sort you out. Okay, cool. So, so I kept on doing that. And that's all I did. I just trusted. My wife said to me, listen to me. I will do the kids in the morning. You are on book duty. All you have to do is do your book. Book, 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 book. And that's all I did. I'd go into my office. I'd stare at my H, 2H pencil and my HB. And I would just draw. And get lost in that. And that's all I'd do. And I was calm about it. I was relaxed about it. But then my next issue came in. 
how the hell am I going to pay for this book? Because I'm self-publishing it. I went to a printer and they said, you need 95 grand. I'm like, oh, what now? Don't worry, we'll sort it. I'm like, well, okay, well, you better, because I'm doing the book now. <laughs> so then, a friend of mine phoned me out of the blue and said, Gordon, I helped sponsor a book on the Kalahari. I think you should get people to sponsor the production of the book. I said, I'm not going to do that. I don't want handouts. So he said, but why did you offer a special edition? Offer a special edition and draw a nice picture, get it covered in leather, make a profit, use that money to fund your book. And I thought to myself, isn't that cheeky? And I thought to myself, it's not, it's clever. So that's exactly what I did. I sold 50 limited edition books. I made enough money to fund the production of this book. And that's how I got around that one. And the amount of people, I'm, I must tell you, I did not write this book on my own. There are about 50 people involved in the, in the making of that book over there. I wrote this book because I felt I had something to say. And what I had to say is simply this. Form follows function. So get this. So what happens is, everyone follows a recipe. We follow this formula that's been told to us our whole lives. We follow the formula. Do this, it's going to be good for you. Do that, boop, boop, boop. Very often we don't question the formula, we just go, we just go, we just go. <coughs> and for the first time, I thought to myself, no, why? Why does it have to be like that? It doesn't. We can decide what we want to do. It doesn't have to. Do you think the first guy who walked on the moon, do you think it, people thought he was going to do it? He did it. Siakulisi was a township kid peeing in his bed who lived at his granny. Last year, we won the Rugby World Cup. We live in a world of possibility, but the problem is we don't always see it. We don't think it can happen because we're surrounded with negativity, we're surrounded with this. We look up, we take one look at Julius and you go, oh my word, oh, oh, look at this guy in his red suit, oh my word, there's 5,000 of him, oh. But get this, Julius isn't in control. True story, he ain't. So, I wrote the book and then I thought to myself, you know, this book needs to travel. Because this book is not just about fly time. This book is about form following function. Figure out what you need something to do. And then tie it or bolt it to do that. This, that exact philosophy can be applied to your life. If something isn't good for you, cut it off and let it go. It's, it's, it's an analogy. It's not just about fly time. This is like a this is psychology book. This. Cool. Now, a lot of people aren't going to see that. They're just going to think, oh, cool, my flies are lashing fish now. <laughs> <laughs> but if your chicken boy knocks so. <laughs> like those. Thank you. I like those too, man. <laughs> so, there are layers. This thing is like an onion. Doof, 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 doof. And if you just want to get the top layer, cool. But if you look hard and long, you'll see, okay, now, I flew big in a book, I can see on that, okay? I'm sorry, but like, I had to be truthful to myself. So, so yeah, so that's basically how this thing came about. I learned a lot. I, I got connected with, with, with drawing again. I hadn't drawn in years. And, and I realized something. You have got to do what you like. You really have to. You owe it to yourself. You know, a lot of people say to me, so I said to someone, oh, I, I, I've written a book. And she said to me, one day I'd like to also write a book. I'm like, why are you saying one day? One day is, this, this, when you say one day, you're giving yourself an out clause. 
you mustn't say one day. You must say, tomorrow I'm writing the book. I will start. And then you must give yourself a date. Within six months, I'm done with draft one. And you've got to get proactive about it. And you mustn't worry about how you're going to do it. Eight years ago, I was sitting in Linden, in my flat. And my wife was crying. She said, we have to. The banks don't take us seriously. We'll never let us buy a house. And she was having this meltdown of epic proportions. No, like, like hectically. And I said to her, I need you to calm down. Yeah, drink a cup of tea. We're going to buy a house. She says, they don't take us seriously. I said, of course they don't. They're banks. But we are going to give them something to take seriously. So guess what I did? I opened up a company. And I funneled every single revenue stream I had through that company. And I went to the bank, there. I look good, don't I? And they're like, you're great, you can have a house. I'm like, amen. <laughs> you just got to show them what they want to see. That's it. There's always a way around something. And that's what we did. So that's what this book is about. I hope it inspires you. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy tying from it. I hope you enjoy the pictures. For those folks who don't like reading, you can just pay. <laughs> I'm told people don't like reading. Well, the readers are leaders. Mm -hmm. no, this is true. Yeah. Check by me. Start things in church. Amen. Yes. Nemo does well. So so it's important. Does anyone have any questions? So how long did it take you to write? This book <laughs> took me two years to write. It took me two years. While I was writing this book, I was doing homework with kids. I was going to the odd audition. I did the odd TV series. I did the odd movie. I did, I was, I was washing. You know, I can wash washing, eh? I've learned you don't put the bras in the washing machine. I'm on to know my I totally miss it. I'm going to hunt for us, man. Super, I'm going to drink. And you've got to rinse it well, otherwise they rash the little guys, you know? And I learned all these things. I learned as soon as you take milk out and that milk's finished, take the next batch out. Poof, poof, poof. Because frozen milk is not good when your wife wakes up in the morning and wants coffee. It makes her the moody. <laughs> no, she said to me, really, entry level requirement. If I don't get the coffee, you are getting the hag, my friend. I was like, oh my word. So I became domestic in, at the same time. Then I've got my one son here and my one son here. And Yanni's like, can I get a frau? I'm like, yeah. Who didn't amaze here? He's so. I'm like, okay, right now. She says, yeah, man, it's market. She says, she says, thank you. Yeah. Done. Draw. Feel it. <laughs> I've got a question. Yeah. And so this book was done like this. It was a family thing. What I've realized is, and this is what I realized. I asked myself, what is what are the most important things to me? And you know what the answer to me was? My family. Without them, I am nothing. I am nothing. It means nothing. They are the most important people in my life. All you have is your people. Money isn't going to make you happy. It can make you comfortable, but it ain't going to make you happy. At the end of the day, we all want the same thing. You want Jerry Maguire to look you in the eye and say, you complete me. <laughs> That's it. We just want another person to look at us and say, yay, you are worth it. I love you. Even though you are a mystical queen potato, but I love you. I'm not saying I love no. you, but you some time to it. He was getting worried. You know? uh, so I think that's the important thing. <laughs> so yeah, so that's basically that's basically how this thing happened. I'm actually relieved it's done. And the other thing I also realized was 
is that you must always enjoy your process. Yeah. Everyone's so busy getting there. And they just want to get there. But they forget about the steps. Do you know right now, there are things happening to you which are laying the foundations of the things you are going to achieve and do tomorrow. Did you know that? You don't even know that though. You don't even know that that guy you met today is the guy who's going to help you with something tomorrow. The cover. Okay, so now I've got this book. I don't have a cover. I taught a woman's son, he was like your age. I taught a woman's son to, to tie flies. I went and gave him a fly tying lesson and I told her that I'm going to write this book. I decided. She said to me, when you're done with the book, come to me, I'll, I'll design your cover. I forgot about it. And I was lying in my bed thinking, a book without a cover is not a book. Because actually, if you speak to anyone who writes, they'll tell you the book's like almost the most important thing. If you don't have a cover, it's not going to sell. It won't work. And then I remembered, remembered this woman, Debbie. And I, I googled Debbie Moulinay. And this company came up, Holy Cow Design. And I phoned her, I said, Debbie, you won't remember me. She says, Gordon, I remember you. Are you bringing the book? I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, do you know what you want for your cover? I'm like, actually I do. And I walked in there, I said, Debbie, I'm thinking Victorian plates. She's like, like that poster over there. I'm like, exactly. She's like, okay, what's your idea? Yeah, I'll have your design by tomorrow. And she did that. The name, I couldn't figure out the name. I'm lying in my, what am I gonna call this blooming thing? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what he or she said to me? We, we never know, we really don't. You know? <laughs> said the following, why didn't you ask them? What do you mean ask? You on Facebook, guy, ask them. So I decided to ask people on Facebook, hi guys, I'm writing this book. Um, I need a title. The person who can get me this title, I'll give you all the original flies of the book. So this guy from America, Nathan Wallen, said, well, why don't you call it, see America, eh? why, why don't you call it the feather mechanic? And then like a hundred people said, yes, why don't you call it the feather mechanic? And then I was like, well, okay, it's the feather mechanic. And that's how we came up with that. It's very important when things are happening to you, to listen. And do you know that the word listen and the word silent are spelled with exactly the same letters? Because basically Kanjaini Laistari as Zai Prati. Zai with silence. And that's why I kept on getting these answers in bed because I'm such a flippin' noisy oak. The only time I shut up is when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Graham, pick one, okay? No, I'm just joking. So, so that's basically the thing. So I've learned a lot. I'm glad it's here. I don't, it's probably not perfect, but that's okay. Like my first child who was born with big ears. He wasn't perfect either. But I love him. I'm joking. And he was born with 11 toes. I'm joking. So that's the thing. So, so basically, I hope you enjoy this book. I hope you love it. Read it. I want this book to go into the world because I think that this book will help people. It will. Fly tying is the best therapy you can have. I promise you, when I'm freaked out, I go to my little desk, I switch on my little light, and I start wrapping thread. And I just, every single muscle in my body just goes pop, and I get lost. And when you are doing that, it's like gardening. Gardening does the same thing for people. Your subconscious can start sorting you out because you're not getting in the way. So tying is not just about time. Yes, we tie flies to catch fish, but you know what? Why do we catch fish? To catch fish, no. 
No. No, if that was the prime, if the prime goal was just to catch fish, you go to pick a plant and buy it. You don't catch fish to catch fish. You catch fish because it's good for you. It's medicine, bro. You don't know. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. Hi. How you doing? That model there is Linda Gorlat. With her husband Richard. How you doing, Rich? Wonderful. So yeah. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the book. And oh what thing. I've got prints as well, which I all the drawings in the book. I've got prints which I've done a nice art paper. If you want to throw them in your dining room or whatever, the examples of them on the counter there. They are for sale if you would like one or two or three or four or five or six even. If you get people who want lots, it's fine. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you there are books. If you haven't got one, grab them. If you pre-ordered, we have them. There's food out there. There's payroll rolls. There's chicken rolls. We're going to be here, as I said, tomorrow. We've got breakfast stuff. We've got lunch stuff. You can take one home with you if you want. But uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy the evening. There's plenty to drink. Yeah. Well, enjoy the evening, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.